Paragon Imus Westermani, Wikipedia article audio. P. Westermani Philippinus P. Westermani Ishinensis P. Westermani Japonicus P. Westermani Westermani. Introduction Causative Agent Morphology History of Discovery Life Cycle Epidemiology Transmission Reservoir Vector Incubation Period Pathology Diagnosis Management and Treatment Clinical Presentation in Humans Confusion with Tuberculosis Public Health and Prevention Strategies Paragonimus westermani is the major species of lung fluke that infects humans, causing paragonimiasis. The species sometimes is called the Japanese lung fluke or Oriental lung fluke. Human infections are most common in Eastern Asia and in South America. Paragonimus westermani was discovered when two Bengal tigers died of paragonimiasis in zoos in Europe in 1878. Several years later, infections in humans were recognized in Formosa. Paragonimiasis is a foodborne parasitic infection caused by the lung fluke. It may cause a subacute to chronic inflammatory disease of the lung. It is one of the most familiar lung flukes with the widest geographical range. It was discovered by Conrad Kerbert in 1878. More than 30 species of trematodes of the genus Paragonimus have been reported to infect animals and humans. Among the more than 10 species reported to infect humans, the most common is Paragonimus westermani, the oriental lung fluke. In size, shape, and color, Paragonimus westermani resembles a coffee bean when alive. Adult worms are 7.5 mm to 12 mm long and 4 mm to 6 mm wide. The thickness ranges from 3.5 mm to 5 mm. The skin of the worm is thickly covered with scale-like spines. The oral and ventral suckers are similar in size, with the latter placed slightly pre-equatorially. The excretory bladder extends from the posterior end to the pharynx. The lobe testes are adjacent from each other located at the posterior end and the lobed ovaries are off-centered near the center of the worm. The uterus is located in a tight coil to the right of the acetabulum, which is connected to the vas deferens. The vitellin glands, which produce the yolk for the eggs, are widespread in the lateral field from the pharynx to the posterior end. Inspection of the tegumental spines and shape of the metacercarii may distinguish between the 30-odd species of Paragonimus species but the distinction is sufficiently difficult to justify suspicion that many of the described species are synonyms. P. westermani was discovered in the lungs of a human by Ringer in 1879 and eggs in the sputum were recognized independently by Manson and Erwin von Baltz in 1880. Manson proposed the snail as an intermediate host and various Japanese workers detailed the whole life cycle in the snail between 1916 and 1922. The species name P. westermani was named after Peter Westerman a zookeeper who noted the trematode in a Bengal tiger in an Amsterdam zoo. Unembryonated eggs are passed in the sputum of a human or feline. Two weeks later, myricidia develop in the egg and hatches. The myricidia penetrate its first intermediate host. Within the snail mother sporocyst form and produce many mother redii, which subsequently produce many daughter redii which shed crawling cercarii into fresh water. 
The crawling Cercarii penetrate freshwater crabs and insist in its muscles becoming Metacercaria. Humans or felines then eat the infected crabs raw. Once eaten, the Metacercaria exists and penetrates the gut, diaphragm, and lung where it becomes an adult worm in pairs. The first intermediate hosts of the Paragonimus westermani are freshwater snails. For many years Terbia granifer was believed to be an intermediate host for the Paragonimus westermani, but Michelson showed in 1992 that this was erroneous. Paragonimus has a quite complex life cycle that involves two intermediate hosts as well as humans. Eggs first develop in water after being expelled by coughing or being passed in human feces. In the external environment, the eggs become embryonate. In the next stage, the parasite Myricidia hatch and invades the first intermediate host such as a species of freshwater snail. Myricidia penetrate its soft tissues and go through several developmental stages inside the snail but mature into Cercarii in three to five months. Cercarii next invade the second intermediate host such as crabs or crayfish and insist to develop into Metacercarii within two months. Infection of humans or other mammals occurs via consumption of raw or undercooked crustaceans. Human infection with P. westermani occurs by eating inadequately cooked or pickled crab or crayfish that harbor metacercarii of the parasite. The metacercarii exist in the duodenum, penetrate through the intestinal wall into the peritoneal cavity, then through the abdominal wall and diaphragm into the lungs, where they become encapsulated and develop into adults. The worms can also reach other organs and tissues such as the brain and striated muscles, respectively. However, when this takes place completion of the life cycles is not achieved, because the eggs laid cannot exit these sites. Reservoir hosts of Paragonimus species include numerous species of carnivores including felids, canids, viverids, mustlids, some rodents, and pigs. Humans become infected after eating raw freshwater crabs or crayfish that have been in seasted with the Metacerci area. Southeast Asia is more predominantly more infected because of lifestyles. Raw seafood is popular in these countries. Crab collectors string raw crabs together and bring them miles inland to sell in Taiwan markets. These raw crabs are then marinated or pickled in vinegar or wine to coagulate the crustacean muscle. This method of preparation does not kill the metacercari, consequently infecting the host. Smashing rice eating crabs in rice patties, splashing juices containing metacercari, can also transmit the parasite, or using juices strained from fresh crabs for medicinal uses. This parasite is easily spread because it is able to infect other animals. An assortment of mammals and birds can be infected and act as paratenic hosts. Ingestion of the paratenic host can lead to infection of this parasite. Paragonimus westermani is distributed in Southeast Asia and Japan. Other species of Paragonimus are common in parts of Asia, Africa, and South and Central America. P. westermani has been increasingly recognized in the United States during the past 15 years because of the increase of immigrants from endemic areas such as Southeast Asia. Estimated to infect 22 million people worldwide. Transmission of the parasite P. westermani to humans and mammals primarily occurs through the consumption of raw or undercooked seafood. In Asia, an estimated 80% of freshwater crabs carry P. westermani. In preparation, live crabs are crushed and metacercarii may contaminate the fingers utensils of the person preparing the meal. 
Accidental transfer of infective cysts can occur via food preparers who handle raw seafood and subsequently contaminate cooking utensils and other foods. Consumption of animals which feed on crustaceans can also transmit the parasite, four cases have been cited in Japan where raw boar meat was the source of human infection. Food preparation techniques such as pickling and salting do not exterminate the causative agent. For example, in a Chinese study eating drunken crabs was shown to be particularly risky because the infection rate was 100% when crabs are immersed in wine for 3-5 minutes and fed to cats slash dog. Animals such as pigs, dogs, and a variety of feline species can also harbor P. westermani. There is no vector, but various snail and crab species serve as intermediate hosts. In Japan and Korea, the crab species area here is an important item of food as well as a notable second intermediate host of the parasite. Time from infection to oviposition is 65 to 90 days. Infections may persist for 20 years in humans. Once in the lung or ectopic site, the worm stimulates an inflammatory response that allows it to cover itself in granulation tissue forming a capsule. These capsules can ulcerate and heal over time. The eggs in the surrounding tissue become pseudotubercles. If the worm becomes disseminated and gets into the spinal cord, it can cause paralysis, capsules in the heart can cause death. The symptoms are localized in the pulmonary system, which include a bad cough, bronchitis, and blood in sputum. Diagnosis is based on microscopic demonstration of eggs in stool or sputum, but these are not present until two to three months after infection. However, eggs are also occasionally encountered in a fusion fluid or biopsy material. Furthermore, you can use morphologic comparisons with other intestinal parasites to diagnose potential causative agents. Finally, antibody detection is useful in light infections and in the diagnosis of extrapulmonary paragonimiasis. In the United States, Detection of antibodies to Paragonimus westermani has helped physicians differentiate Paragonimiasis from tuberculosis in Indochinese immigrants. Additionally, radiological methods can be used to X-ray the chest cavity and look for worms. This method is easily misdiagnosed, because pulmonary infections look like tuberculosis, pneumonia, or spirochetosis. A lung biopsy can also be used to diagnose this parasite. According to the CDC, praziquantel is the drug of choice to treat paragonimiasis. The recommended dosage of 75 mg kg per day, divided into three doses over three days has proven to eliminate P. westermani. Bithionol is an alternative drug for treatment of this disease but is associated with skin rashes and urticaria. For additional information, see the recommendations in the medical letter. Case Study An 11 one year old Hmong Laotian boy was brought into the emergency room by his parents with a 2-3 month history of decreasing stamina and increasing dyspnea on exertion. He described an intermittent non-productive cough and decreased appetite and was thought to have lost weight. He denied fever, chills, night sweats, headache, palpitations, hemoptysis, chest pain, vomiting, diarrhea or urticaria. There were no pets at home. At the time of immigration to the United States 16 months earlier, all family members had negative purified protein derivative intradermal tests except one brother, who was positive but had a normal chest radiograph and subsequently received isoniazid for 12 months. A left lateral thoracotomy was performed during which 1,800 ml of an odorless, cloudy, pea soup like fluid containing a pale yellow, 
cottage cheese-like, proteinaceous material was removed, along with a solitary, 6 mm long, reddish. Brown fluke subsequently identified as Paragonimus westermani. Human infection with Paragonimus may cause acute or chronic symptoms, and manifestations may be either pulmonary or extrapulmonary. Acute symptoms The acute phase may be marked by diarrhea, abdominal pain, fever, cough, urticaria, hepatosplenomegaly, pulmonary abnormalities, and eosinophilia. The acute stage corresponds to the period of invasion and migration of flukes and consists of abdominal pain, diarrhea, and urticaria, followed roughly one to two weeks later by fever pleuritic chest pain, cough, and slash or dyspnea. Chronic symptoms During the chronic phase, pulmonary manifestations include cough, expectoration of discolored sputum, hemoptysis, and chest radiographic abnormalities. Chronic pulmonary paragonimiasis, the most common clinical pattern, is frequently mild, with chronic cough, brown-tinged sputum, and true hemoptysis. Practitioners should always consider the possibility of tuberculosis in patients with fevers, cough, and weight loss. However, in endemic areas it is prudent to consider paragonimiasis as well. Flukes occasionally cause confusion when they invade the pleural space without entering the lung parenchyma. In contrast to tuberculosis, pulmonary paragonimiasis is only rarely accompanied by rals or other adventitious breath sounds. Many patients are asymptomatic, and symptomatic patients frequently look well despite a prolonged course. In pleural paragonimiasis, symptoms may be minimal and diagnosis complicated. Since ova are not coughed or spit out or swallowed and there is frequently no cough. Such patients may develop pleural effusions and, because of the coendemicity with Mycobacterium tuberculosis, such effusions are often misdiagnosed as isolated tuberculosis. Extrapulmonary locations of the adult worms result in more severe manifestations, especially when the brain is involved. Extrapulmonary paragonimiasis is rarely seen in humans, as the worms nearly exclusively migrate to the lungs. Despite this, cysts can develop in the brain and abdominal adhesions resulting from infection have been reported. Cysts may contain living or dead worms, a yellow-brownish thick fluid. When the worm dies or escapes, the cysts gradually shrink leaving nodules of fibrous tissues and eggs which can calcify. Worldwide the most common cause of hemoptysis is paragonimiasis. Other case studies Coroleptixis amorensis, semisulcospira calculus, semisulcospira cancellata, semisulcospira extensa, semisulcospira gotche. Semisulcospira libertina, synonym, Semisulcospira tuchiana, Semisulcospira mandarina, synonym, Semisulcospira weggiongenses, Semisulcospira multisyncta, Semisulcospira nataperta, Semisulcospira nataperta quinaria, Semisulcospira posyncta, Semisulcospira peregrinomum. Adapted from Heath, Harley W. and Susan G. Marshall. Plural paragonimiasis in a Laotian child. Asterisk. Pachucky C.T., Lewandowski R.A., Brown V.A., Sonnen Kalb B.H., Vrano M.J. American paragonimiasis treated with praise aquantal. N. English J. Med 311, 582.3. Doi 10.1056/nejm1984083031109060 Prokop GW Marty AM Shek DN Mies DR 
Ma GM. North American Paragonimiasis, A Case Report. Acta Cital. 44, 7580. DOI 10.1159 00032623. Prevention programs should promote more hygienic food preparation by encouraging safer cooking techniques and more sanitary handling of potentially contaminated seafood. The elimination of the first intermediate host, the snail, is not tenable due to the nature of the organism's habits. A key component to prevention is research, more specifically the research of everyday behaviors. This recent study was conducted as a part of a broader effort to determine the status of Paragonimus species infection in Laos. An epidemiological survey was conducted on villagers and school children in Nambak district between 2003 and 2005. Among 308 villagers and 633 primary and secondary school children, 156 villagers and 92 children had a positive reaction on a Paragonimus skin test. Consequently, several types of crabs were collected from markets and streams in a Paragonimiasis endemic area for the inspection of Metacercarii and were identified as the second intermediate host of the Paragonimus species. In this case study, we see how high prevalence of paragonimiasis is explained by dietary habits of the population. Amongst school children, many students reported numerous experiences of eating roast crabs in the field. Adult villagers reported frequent consumption of seasoned crabs and papaya salad with crushed raw crab. In addition to this characteristic feature of the villagers' food culture, the denizens of this area drink fresh crab juice as a traditional cure for measles, and this was also thought to constitute a route for infection. This article incorporates CC by 3.0 text from the reference.